So I explained to you in a previous video that in Genesis 6, we believe that giants, that they are the offsprings of the sons of God. Now, there are people who have a hard time believing that, so they will try to deny this argument. So what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to talk about the remnant of the giants, which will be interesting. But I'm also going to add a little bit more apologetics here, a little bit more stuff, which will be convincing. First of all, let's talk about uh, what they believe in verse 4. So, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So, you know from this study that we argue that giants, in verse 4, you notice, if you paid attention, it shows that these giants are the offspring of the sons of God. But how they argue against that is, so look at that verse again. It says, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that. So that phrase is the key. What they mean by also after that is the first part of the verse. There were giants in the earth in those days. So giants were already there. They weren't the offspring of sons of God. They were already there. And also after that, then what happened? When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. So here the sons of God intermingle with the daughters of men, and they produce, notice, mighty men, not giants. They produce, they give birth to mighty men. So that's how they get around that. Now in my previous video, I explained to you the problem with that verse. The problem with that verse is that, so I, I'm not going to mention all the points, just a simple part. There were giants in the earth in those days, notice semicolon, and also after that. So that phrase, also after that, is not referring to after there were giants in the earth in those days. Why? Because that part, there were giants in the earth in those days, ended with a semicolon. So the also after that is referring to something else. How do you know that? Because it ends with a comma. It's continuing the idea. Notice, and also after that, after what? What's continuing the thought? When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So the also after that phrase is simply saying, also after when the sons of God intermingled with the daughters of men, it produced those mighty men, which were the giants, we argued. So that's what the also after that was referring to, we argued. Now, the thing is, how we know that for a fact is this one. So here's the point here. Also after that is the crux here. So we have to figure out this. Also after that, is that phrase referring to after the sons of God intermingling? the critics will say no. But we argue yes. We argue that it's after when the sons of God intermingle, then what? The next step is giants. But they want it, the critics, they argue this way. They argue it's giants. It's giants first. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, then it leads to the sons of God intermingling. That's how they want to argue, because they don't want the giants to be the offspring of this intermingling. So how, which step is right? Is it this one, giants first, also after that, then this one? Uh, let me do this, that way it'll be easier. Is it giants first, then also after that, then sons of God intermingling? Or do we believe it's also after that, sons of God intermingling, then giants? The context is actually, look at verse 1. So in verse 1, they didn't read this part. And, to, and it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, what's first, the giants or sons of God intermingling? Sons of God intermingling. Verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of which all they chose. 
So here are these sons of God grabbing these daughters of men, and notice how the Lord described them at verse 3. Look at this. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days. Remember that. Yet his days. So these days that the Lord was talking about, that man is living, when the sons of God were intermingling with them, those days, God says, shall be in 120 years. What about those days? Verse 4, there were giants in the earth in what? Those days. those days. So see that? So there's your answer right there. So it's definitely, look, context proved it. So this is supported by context. So not just every single part of verse 4, which we did in our last video, but even context proved it. Context proved that verse 1 through 2, sons of God, intermingling and because of that in those days the giants came off all right it's not giants first since sons of god are intermingling it's sons of god intermingling then the giants now here's something interesting as we look at the book of genesis chapter 7 genesis 7. now isn't it interesting that in genesis 6 what did god say god said that the end is come of all flesh right now here's a question the question is this is that okay so god drowned out all humans animals and even the mutants but what about the creatures of the sea because noah's ark did not have an aquarium obviously he did not have every single uh, class of fish here's another interesting thing first corinthians 15 says there is all manner of flesh and remember god said he'll destroy all flesh does that include fish? Well, 1 Corinthians 15 said, in different kinds of flesh, there's humans, birds, uh, creeping things, animals, and fishes. It actually said that. Now, let's see how Genesis 7 describes about God destroying all flesh. He doesn't mention fishes, but he mentions the birds, the creeping things, and the animals, and the humans. Look at this. Genesis chapter 7. Look at verse 21. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Now notice, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. No fish. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. Now that makes sense. Fish don't breathe in air. They don't do that. And every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the what? ground see we're talking about we're talking about the earth that's why when god said god will drown the earth in genesis 1 the dry land was called what earth both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven and they were destroyed from the earth fishes are not mentioned so here's the thing what are you getting at pastor what i'm getting at is this is that when the sons of god intermingled with all sorts of animals which i showed you at a different video i'm not going to explain it on this one but the sons of god they intermingled with all kinds of things humans and animals that's why they were able to produce these kind of offsprings giants or it can be mermaids and tar satyrs or god knows what god knows what kind of offspring was produced so maybe some weird aliens reptilians but here's the thing is that these people survived because how do we know they survived because look at the book of deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter 2 deuteronomy chapter 2 you know what the bible says the bible didn't say just giants it didn't just say it that way it says remnant of the giants do you know what remnant means remnant means leftovers that survived and that's really apparent when you look at the word remnant about Israel for the tribulation. God says a remnant, a remnant, a remnant shall be saved, remnant, remnant. Why? Because in the tribulation, at the end times, a lot of them are slaughtered. And there's going to be some that survive. So what did these things survive through? See that? Look at Deuteronomy. Notice what the word God says at chapter 2. And look at verse 20. That also was accounted a land of, notice, giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims, a people great and many and tall as the Anakims.
But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them, and dwelt in their stead. Also look at chapter 2 and verse 10. The Emims dwelt there in time past, a people great, many and tall, as the Anakims. Okay, so we see right here that there's this group of giants called Anakims right here. So remember these guys. These bad boys are going to come out pretty important for surviving, actually, these Anakims. Now look at chapter 3. Chapter 3. And notice this is not just some uh, ordinary giants, like really tall people of today. This is something more than that. It's like little abnormal. It's like supernatural. We're going to look at Deuteronomy chapter 3 and look at verse 11. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the, what? Remnant of giants. Giants that survived. And you got to realize this. Moses was long before Joshua. And Moses was the one who conquered Og. So you got to realize these, these giants survived through something else before. Now let's keep reading. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. See, this is a little abnormal. Is it not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon? Look how tall he is. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. That's like more, a little bit more than 13 feet, see? That's a little bit more than 13 feet. And it's in iron. Why? Because if they make it at wood, maybe he'd break it. But notice the breadth of it, four cubits as well, see? So he's really wide right there. I think four cubits is six feet. I'm not sure, but that's like a pretty long thing for him. Okay, so we know this at Genesis 7, 21 through 22, that when it says all flesh, the thing is, is that it shows right here that the water, the aquatic animal, survived. So then how did these giants survive at Deuteronomy 2 and 3? Because it said remnant. The reason why they survived the most logical thing, the only answer you can think of, is that they went underground. It's through these aquatic creatures. Through these aquatic creatures, they were the ones that survived through them. So perhaps these aquatic creatures, they intermingled again, and then they survived. It's also possible they could have uh, went out to outer space. Because a lot of, uh, when you're going to find demonic activity, it's in two places, outer space and bottom of the sea. That's what you're going to find out in the Bible. But you know, it's more out of the bottom of the sea you'll mostly find in the Bible, not outer space. It's mostly from the bottom of the sea. That's why, as one Bible-believing teacher said, Dr. Upman, he believes that a lot of the UFOs and aliens, it's more from underground rather than from above. So we see right here something interesting about these remnant of the giants, but these Anakims, look at Joshua 11 now. Joshua 11. This is really interesting about these survivors. Joshua 11. Now remember Joshua, he had to, he had the job of wiping out the giants, right? Moses got rid of the first part of the remnant, and then Joshua was the one next after that. But then you got the story of David and Goliath. You also got the story of Goliath's brothers who have six fingers and six toes, which is somewhat supernatural. So what happened here? I'll show you something here. Look at Joshua chapter 11. Look at verse 21. The Bible tells you why Goliath survived. The reason why Goliath and the other giants survived is, and at that time came Joshua and cut off the who? Anakims from the mountains. Remember those guys? These bad boys, the giants, Anakims. Now look at this. From Hebron, from Deber, and from Anab, and from all the mountains of Judah, and from all the mountains of Israel, Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in where? Gaza. That's the Philistine city. In Gath. Remember Goliath of Gath? That's the Philistine city. And in Ashdod. That's Philistine. There remained. That's why they survived right there. So we see right here how they were able to survive is because these Anakims. So if you want to find leftover of remnant, the closest clue you're going to get is in that location of Philistine. The Philistines would be the location. It's also possible perhaps the Antichrist can come out of that region because I do know that there are some typologies of Philistines uh, 
connected with the antichrist somehow so which is interesting so it can be very possible